Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. I think a lot of us are on a transformational journey, if you will. We're trying to either heal, we're trying to move life forward, succeed in all different ways, whether it's your job, whether it's a personal life. And we've got somebody who is phenomenal in helping you along with your journey. She's a certified clinical rapid transformational therapy practitioner. I wasn't sure if I would get all those words out correctly, <laughs> but I think I did. And we're going to learn more about that. She's Donnell Rourke, and she joins us. Hi, Donnell. How are you doing? I am blessed. How about yourself? Doing fantastic. Yeah. You know, it could be a cloudy Great. day, but it's always a sunny day if you look at it that way. And mm -hmm. for you, transformational therapy. Now, I've heard of therapy before. Of course, we know what traditional therapy is. Why don't we start there? And we're going to get into a bunch of different things today and, and help people out if they, you know, they're moving on, trying to heal. What exactly is a transformational therapy practitioner? So uh, what it is, is I was actually trained by Marissa Peer, who is the creator of Rapid Transformational Therapy. And Rapid Transformational Therapy is a hybrid therapy. It's taking hypnotherapy. Oh. It's going to combine it with neuro-linguistics programming. So we're going to be reprogramming the brain. Uh, we have the cognitive behavior therapy where we do some talking and we also want to really dive into the psychotherapy of just exactly what does that mean. And all of that is usually done within one to three sessions. It's not taking months or years to try and fix an issue. It's usually most of the time it's in one session. Interesting. And I've, I've heard that that can be done, especially when it comes to hypnotherapy. Let's say somebody wants to stop smoking, um, have some weight issues. It really, I guess it depends on the person, how open they are to making a change and healing, right? It's how open they are to suggestions. See, in hypnotherapy, a lot of people think that I can make you do something, but it's not. I'm only talking to you and your subconscious mind is what is replying to me. And then I ask you more questions until you have an aha moment. And when you have that aha moment, I write it down. Mm -hmm. And then I take your aha moment, your own words, and I put it in a transformational recording so that you can listen to exactly what your mind said that you want to get the life that you said that you want to have. So, Donnell, I'll share with you, uh, in my journey, I was hypnotized very recently, as a matter of fact, and it just kind of happened by chance. So I can speak freely about something like this where you're in full control and you just mm -hmm. nailed something that. I knew happened, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't process it until you said it, the aha moment. I knew where mm -hmm. I wanted to go. I was going back to my childhood. I knew where I wanted physically, where I wanted to be in my mind as my eyes were closed during the session, but I felt like I was so there. And then at some point I had the aha moment where it's like, ah, I know what the issues are, were, um, but what a, what a feeling of calmness and healing ever since. And that was just one set, one session. Right. And so what I like to help uh, individuals know is when you go back into a scene, you are not reliving that scene. You know, no matter how much we really would like to relive something, you know, you know, we can eat a really good meal and it tastes really good or have a really nice relationship with somebody. And that moment, that feeling that we had, we would really like to be able to go back to that moment and feel everything exactly like how we did not going to happen or we would all mm. stay in a state of bliss all the time right you know but what happens is you go back and now you can see it like you're watching it on a tv screen exactly you're you're perfectly safe you're not being harmed you are you are there but you are there as a spectator seeing what has happened and how it made you feel because it's that how it made you feel part that's the most important. That's what's created that memory in your mind. And when that memory is stored there and you replay it and you relive it over and over and over, those feelings that you had at that, that moment keep being relived over and over. Where in hypnosis, especially with rapid transformational therapy, what we do is we go to that part. And it's usually going to be when you're a child, you know, and that's where, you know, the inner child work comes in because that's where the roots were. That's where the seeds were planted. 
And when those seeds were planted when we were little and life happened and watered it and fertilized it, and it just kept growing into this massive issue that we now, you know, are procrastinating all the time. Why are we procrastinating? Why can't we seem to attract wealth? You know, what are the different issues that individuals relate to based upon their childhood? All of them. You know, we don't get that. We don't get that the seeds were planted when we were young on whether or not we could be prosperous. We just think, oh, well, if I go out and work really hard, I'm going to be prosperous. No, I know a lot of people that go out and work really hard and they don't have that much money. Yeah. And, and then I have some that have all this money, but they're not happy. They're not living a prosperous life. So it's really asking two questions and it's comes down to what do I want and how do I want to feel? And as we talk about the inner child, it could have been something that happened that crushed your, your self-confidence. And that stands in the way of you taking the steps to meet the goal to prosper financially, but you won't know Correct. until you figure it out. In my case, kind of knew what it was, but <laughs> others might not know. They need to go back and see it. And sadly, and it is what it is. Unfortunately, all of those or many of those things do happen in your childhood. And as parents, we don't know any better. You know, we plant, we help plant those seeds, but we didn't know right. or our parents didn't know. The only thing you can do, I guess, is as a parent to try and stop that or fix that along the way. Right. Right. And that's what we do is with inner child work. Um, as you said, it's generation upon generation of things that have happened. You know, my, my mother was doing what she was taught, yep. you know, the only thing that she was taught, because that's all you can do. You can only do what you were taught, what, how you were raised. And if you happen to go to school for child development, you might learn how to, you know, parent a little bit better in that realm, or you might read several good help, you know, books for raising children. But even at that, we're, it's all based upon our emotion, our inner child on how we are going to parent, But what the inner child work really does is we are being our own parent. I am teaching my clients that when I work with you, what are the words that your parents or your grandparents or your teachers said or didn't say that has created the issue that's in you? You know, let's go on to finances. Let's say for finances, if you always heard in your household, oh, we can't afford that. Money doesn't grow on trees. You know, if, you know, we all heard that story. Well, back in my day, I used to walk in the snow barefoot, right. you know, 10 miles, you know. <laughs> and, you know, so you have all these issues that come from generation to generation because nobody is willing to say, no, I'm not going to let that be my destiny or the destiny of my children. So, If you do the inner child work, you're actually going to start to dive into those areas where there is that hurt, where you didn't get that love, that attention, that feeling of safety that you really need and want. And so I teach you how to be your biggest cheerleader, how to look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I like you. You're amazing. What a great person you are. Even if you just got up out of bed, if that's the only thing you did today, you got out of bed and you haven't been out of bed because you've just been sad and depressed for so long, good job. Tell yourself that. Find the good in yourself. Don't be a bully to yourself. We bully ourselves every time. How many times do we look in the mirror and find the things that are wrong with us instead of the things that are amazing? Mm-hmm. The, I mean, When you go and you look in the mirror and you just are constantly putting yourself down, come on, you you expect the world to treat you with respect, but you don't. And that all comes back to that inner child because the world showed that child they weren't safe. What they wanted didn't matter, that they weren't enough just being who they were. They had to be like their sister or their brother. They had to be like another student in the room, you know? So when you have a teacher who, even if they said, oh, look how smart you are, you always got to be smart. You're going to become that perfectionist because you always got to keep those standards because you like that feeling of being important. But guess what? You are important exactly the way you are. You were created 
just the way you are. You're not a mistake. Nobody was created by a mistake. And when we get that, that we have this purpose and we start being our own inner cheerleader and we start cheering ourselves on, that's what's going to move us in the direction of living the life that we love. Because when you live a life you love, you make decisions based upon what it is you want and how you want to feel. If not, you are just living a life based upon what the world is throwing at you. And the world is going to throw a lot of stuff at you. And you can either allow it to dictate how you feel, or you can decide for yourself, this is a moment. This thing happened to me for this moment. And this moment, I'm going to deal with that emotion. But once that moment's gone, let it go. You don't need to keep, we replay the thing over and over and over and in our head of what we could have done, what we should have done, or how we should have reacted. Unless that event is happening at that moment? No. Does that mean that you let somebody walk all over you and and you just let it go? No. But you feel the emotion right then. Someone's, you know, I'll throw my husband under the bus, you know, when he and I are having a discussion and we're not really seeing eye to eye. Um, I like to take a break and I don't recommend just walking out of the door. No. Just leaving and leaving your partner is not a good thing. You can even do it in front of them. Say, hey, I need a break. I need to go ahead and take six breaths, full, deep breaths in and out slowly. Do that six times. When you breathe in, say, what do I want? When you breathe out, say, how do I want to feel? By about the fourth, fifth, sixth one, the answers are usually the same for what I want. How do I want to feel? I want a loving relationship with my husband where I feel heard and respected. How do I want to feel? I want to feel at peace. I want to feel loved. I want to feel heard. And so when I come back to the situation, I no longer have to be right. I no longer have to be the loudest one in the room. So you make sure you understand what I hear. Because I found in myself, what is it? What do you really want? I really want to be married to this man. So I need to listen to the words that he's saying and take ownership for the things that I can change. At the same time, listen to the words that I am saying to make sure that I am not just adding on other stuff that's really not relevant to what I want. And so having that understanding of feeling the feeling for 90 seconds, he said something hurtful to me that hurt me, my feelings. I say, hey, that really hurt my feelings. I'm going to feel it for that 90 seconds. It's an emotional loop. But what happens is, let's say he goes off to work, you know, and I'm thinking about all day long, just how he, how dare he say that to me? I'm going to tell him this whenever we talk. And, you know, I might even send little mean things throughout the day just to do jabs but he's not doing anything to me right then. Not at all. He's busy at work. But all day long, I'm just stewing in this anger because I allow the situation to now dictate how I'm going to have my life affected for the rest of the day. Some people even do this for weeks, months, years. You know, hey, what's wrong with you? Well, my coworker did X, Y, Z to me, and now I have to sit next to them and I really hate going to work. When did that happen? Oh, a year ago. Oh, okay. Has he done anything to you today? <laughs> so, right. This moment, it's, it's literally moment by moment because we are only in the present moment. What happened in the past is gone. What is happening in the future is only for us to make now to produce that future. And you can have a choice. You can either have a wonderful life You can have a life where I don't care. I mean, I've had so much sadness happen around me in the last six months. And for me to have peace through those sad times, I lost my mother-in-law in in November and my 33-year-old daughter just lost her husband who was 37 less than a month ago. So sorry. And the pain that my daughter felt just ripped me apart. But what I had to continue to tell myself is what's going on in this moment. This moment is the one that I need to be in because I had to be able to still have my peace 
so that I could be there for her. It's not that I'm not allowed to have these emotions. No, remember, fill them, fill them fully for 90 seconds. If you don't, if you don't feel an emotion, it doesn't matter if it's joy, sadness, whatever the emotion that comes at you, if you stop it mid place, it's going to be stored in the body and it's going to manifest itself as some type of illness, a headache, stomach issues, you know, arthritis. I had a client who had um, came to me because of arthritis and we found out that it was anger issues that she was dealing with that in her in sleep. She was just gripping her hands so tight that the arth- when she hasn't had surgery on her joints and her fingers, you know, and once she had that aha moment, she doesn't have the issue. Her hands don't hurt. And she's like, I did not realize that you could help me help my pain by understanding that it was caused from my anger. And I'm like, I didn't know it either. (laughs) It's so true. Why, you know, it's a cliche. Stress kills because, Mm -hmm. and and stress could come from any form. Could be anger, could be sadness, whatever it might be bottled up and it's got to go somewhere. And also to your point, Donnell, that you need to feel sadness and anger to feel happiness. You have to have all of them. Some people think, I just want to always be happy. I just want to always be happy. Well, you're not really living life. If you're always just happy, it's got to be all of those mixed together, right? Correct. You got to, you got to feel the emotion of now, Yeah. you know, and watching a show and really allowing yourself to feel the emotion of the show when it's happening, if it's a wedding and it makes you cry or if someone's saying something sweet, or even if someone says something and it makes you angry, can't believe that person said that, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's like you have that, you can feel the emotion of now it's, but when you take that emotion of now and have it for weeks, months, years, that's when you are no longer living. You're just existing on emotions of yesterday. And eventually what happens is that emotion, because it's not really being circulated through, it's just being stored. Yep. Then you're going to have issues. And like I said, I, I've, I'm one who has fought chronic illness for over 30 years, and I have found that having a change in mindset and also an understanding of how the body has works has completely taken my life from being bedridden to now loving the life I live every moment of the day, excited a, at what I'm going to do. You had an aha moment. <laughs> mm-hmm, <laughs> right? I did. Yeah. It's so profound. And for the, those things that we can't, and by the way, when we talk, I call it the emotional bucket. You j- After a while, pff, it's going to overflow. There's only so it much does. that you can keep inside. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you need to go back to your inner child through hypnosis or some type of therapy to figure out what it is so you can deal with it. And in my journey, somebody said to me in the early part of my current journey, uh, live in the moment. Why don't you live in the moment? And I, I didn't, I try to now, but it's because always looking toward the future. What happens when you look toward the future? you worry about things. Why are right. you worrying about things? Because they've done the research. It's scientific that 90% of the stuff that you worry about never happens, never transpires. Why are you worrying about it? It's useless. Correct. You can either have faith that it's going to happen, or you can have fear. And when you have fear that it's going to happen, you're suppressing it. You're keeping it down. It's not going to come to you. You're not attracting it. I want to attract happiness. I want to attract wealth. I want to attract friends and loved ones into my life. I'm not here to just try and um, woo-woo stuff and just say, I can help you. No, I want you and anybody who talks with me, listens to this to understand it's in you. It's already there. You just have to have your own aha moment. Mm -hmm. And when you do, you're going to start to see your life as a gift. And when you notice that it's a gift, it's a gift that you can't wait to open every single day. You're excited to wake up for your day instead of dreading, oh, got to get out of bed. Instead, just go, I love life. It's amazing. I can't wait for my day. So when you wake up, be gratitude. You have gratitude. Just say thankful. What are you thankful for? Once you're thankful, 
oh, now ask yourself two questions. What is it that I want today? Be specific. And how do I want to feel? And then when you have those answers, go about your day with that. Now, you're going to be stuck in traffic at times. Somebody's going to say something mean or rude to you. That's, Mm -hmm. again, be in that moment. But the rest of your time is focused on the two things that you said that you wanted and how you wanted to feel, because then you will be in charge of your life instead of everyone else. Well, when that happens, let that moment go. And I'm a big proponent of the universe. You put out, you get back. Great example. That's right. Friday night, went into town, into a village here. Crazy busy. Just, I didn't think it would be that way so early in the season. Was meeting a couple of friends, just going to have dinner. And I'm driving around, can't find a space. And I was like, really? Come on. And then I was like, bing, stop. I am going to find a space. Universe, can you please provide me with a space? Can I have one? It's going to be around the corner. Sure enough, not making it up. I make the turn around the corner of, you know, the different rows of traffic. Guy's walking with his wife. He's like, over there. I'm like, yeah, thank you. Not only does that happen, there's a guy next to me with his small child and wife, and he's looking for a space. Somebody else is pulling out, and I look at him. I go, that one's mine, and that one's yours. We're like, yeah, great. Have a good time tonight. See, and, and that's, that's the whole thing. When you believe and you expect it to happen, it does. Yeah. And that happens all the time for myself and my husband. We get the best parking. We walk right into restaurants when there's like lines of people out the door waiting. And we're like, oh, we're probably not going to get a table. My husband's like, oh, we're going to go get a table. And he'll walk up and boom, we got a table. Yeah. You know, and it's that belief that you can have what you want. Now, we're not going around being mean and fighting people and getting what we want. No, no. we allow the universe to give it to us. That's all it is. And it's so, <laughs> is it a nice? Yeah, it's just yeah. A, a reframe of your mind. And, and it's funny you should say that because I had a, a situation happen yesterday and it was a negative one in my life as part of my journey. I'm like, really? And I'm like, somebody didn't do the right thing. And I always say, just do the right thing. Whatever it is, just do the right thing. Right. And I thought to myself, you know what? As much as I try, I do the right thing. I I believe I do. And I got to tell you, it was such a nice, calm feeling that I had at that moment. Like, yeah, all right. I feel good. Not, not, wasn't like a, uh, you know, pat yourself on the back. I never do that. Mm-hmm. It was just a feeling of like, that's the way it's supposed, supposed to be. And that's the way it, it, it has to be. And it was just a, a, a positive, just calm feeling while somebody else is not doing the right thing and they'll suffer. For, not, I don't mean suffer, but they'll, they have to deal with their own situation. Right. You know, not me. Karma, you know, oh, and yeah. karma is not anything that you're doing. It's literally karma is what you put out, you get back. Mm-hmm. So if you're putting out the calm, doing the right thing, yep. it's not a matter of whether they're doing it. You're, you are only in charge of you. And good job. And you should pat yourself on the back when you're, when you're living your life according to how you choose. When you say, I'm going to do the right thing, you're choosing to do the right thing. And that's a great thing. Add a boy's high five in yourself. I mean, I'm a big uh, uh, fan of Mel Robbins and her new book, The High Five, you know, giving yourself a high five in the mirror. I do that. It's silly. I have a handprint on my mirror. But when you give yourself that high five in the mirror and look yourself in the eye and say, great job, it did something to me. And now I have tried to keep it on the same spot, but you know, I have a handprint. I I want to jump in based on that because um, before we, we just literally have a minute left, Um, but we do have instant feedback. You can reach us instant feedback, Steve at gmail.com. Kelly is in Dallas. I guess she she heard what we were talking about. She says, I heard when you praise yourself, you're supposed to do it verbally. Have you heard that? It's not that I've heard that, but I've, I've lived it. When you just think good thoughts, you know, good job, whatever, that's one thing. But because, again, that goes back to that inner child. When you are a child and you did something, you want to be praised out loud so you could hear it. And so when you do that same thing for you, you're being that parent that you wanted, that teacher, that coach, Mm -hmm. you're like, way to go. Good job. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. I'm so proud of you. And when you hear yourself say that, and especially if you can look yourself in the eyes 
you get it. Your soul gets it. Your body feels it. You Mm -hmm. get energized. It's that thing that where you hear your own voice telling you that you are enough, that everything is available to you, and that what you want matters. You go, really? Huh. And I'm an adult now. So, yeah, Yeah. I can do that. Exactly. Uh, It's like, technically, you're reparenting yourself in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. You're reparenting yourself the way that you need to be reparented. Yeah. Giving yourself exactly what you need. Yep. Because only you know. And you didn't know when you were a kid. (laughs) Because you were a kid. Nope. You didn't have those skills. That's right. Donnell, if somebody wants to work with you and just see a transformation in their life, what do they do? The best place to go is my website. It's health-of-it.com. And on there, you will get to my scheduling page. You'll have all my social media. You can even find all my books that I have on Amazon just directly through health-of-it.com. We didn't even if get to the books. Me, we didn't even get to the books yet. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. It's fun. You know, but yeah, just go to healthofit.com, the dashes in between, and you'll be able to contact me. Um, but yeah, I've had a great time. This is yeah, wonderful. Same. It was it was great talking with you and thank you for the from all of us for the uh the jolt of positivity, genuine positivity. Really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank it's you. blessed. I've been very blessed. Yep. I look forward to talking to you again. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. 